Oh, but, Captain, we just came back from reconnaissance mission at Kalakai. The only action there is the sand gnats are battling the tsetse flies. Good. Well, when you return, you can tell me who's winning. Oh, it's going to be easy, sir. Those little things are so small. Hey, hard to Captain, you can't send us on a mission like that, no, sir. No, I can't, can I? Well, I happen to have a little silver eagle on my collar, Mikhail. It says that I can. You're ordered to Kalakai for three days, and that's an order. It's Captain, sir. I've taken care of everything just as you requested. Mr. Devery is settled in his quarters and he'll be ready to come hey, over here. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Devery? Is that Brad Devery, the, the war correspondent from United Press? Yes. <laughs> Carpenter, with your loose lips, I'm surprised you haven't sunk a fleet. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. So that's why you're railroading us to Kalakai, huh? A newspaper man is here. Now, Captain. <laughs> You don't really think I'd try to steal your spotlight, do you, sir? Why not, Mikhail? Why not? You've stolen everything else on this base. Well, how can you say a thing like that, sir? Very simple. Very simple. I just move my mouth up and down, and out it comes, out it comes. Don't get out of here, you glory hounds. Get out of here. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait just a minute, Captain. <laughs> Look, um... We'll stay out of your hair, sir, if you let us go to Manakura. At least there'll be something for the men to do there. What do you say? Yeah. Manakura? Oh, no, that's out of the question. After the trouble that you and your pirates got into the last time you were there, dressing up in native costumes and dancing in their flower festival. <laughs> Why, you're a disgrace to the Navy. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that, sir. After all, I won first prize. Remember, Skip, I was a tiger lily. I put a lot of time in my costume and... Cut it out! And get your stems off of my desk. <laughs> now you've got your orders. You're going to Kalakai. Now shove off! Oh, but Captain. Don't you but Captain me. You heard me. Get out of here and take your tiger lily with you. Out! <laughs> Come on, tiger. Put him in some water. He looks like he's wilting. <laughs> Nothing is going to stand in your way this time, Forty Knot Binghamton. You're going to be front. Hey! <laughs> Let Binghamton think we want the Kalakai. While we put a dab of shaving lotion behind each ear and head for Shangri-La. Now, look, you guys, we're not going to Manakura. That'll be a direct disobedience of orders. As much as a Skip and I agree with you, we don't make the rules. We just break them. We just break them. <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute, Skip. Why, it, 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 Binghamton be mad in a wet hen? Look, as far as I'm concerned, that man can lay himself a wet egg. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled a low-down trick, Chuck. Yes, sir, shipping us out while he hogs the limelight with that newspaper guy. Well, maybe you're right, Skip. Look, Skip. all I'm saying is this. That if Binghamton wants to play it sneaky, brother, so can we. <laughs> and don't forget, this crew deserves a vacation, too. You can say that again, Skip. We can certainly use it. Oh, I'm beat. Now, look, Skip, if Binghamton finds out, he's going to have our height. Oh, stop worrying, will you, Tiger Lily? I won't say a word if you won't. We'll just keep it our own little secret, okay? Well, okay, Skipper, but I, uh... Hey, what are you doing? Well, I'm packing and going to Manakura. How about you? You... Hey, you guys! We're going to Manakura! Manakura! I gotta get my stuff. Hey, you guys! Mom's a word! Mr. Devery. How are you, Mr. Devery? Welcome aboard, sir, and welcome to the South Pacific. Hi, Captain. Lieutenant. Sir. Uh, won't you make yourself comfortable right there? I'm Mr. not Mr. looking for comfort, Binghamton. I'm a war correspondent. I'm just looking for a story. If you have one, I want it. Oh, yes. If, you, if I have one. Yeah. Well, uh, actually, actually, Mr. Devery, I've, I've been so busy fighting a war, you know. I haven't had time to take many notes, but uh, <laughs> if you want to start pitching the questions, I'll try and... 
spat out the answer. Okay, when can I get to see this Commander McHale I've heard so much about? McHale? I should... <laughs> I've heard of old sea dogs losing their legs, but you're the first one I ever saw lose his chair. <laughs> Are you all right, too? Well, I have parts of all right. Take your hands off me. Pick up the chair. Yes, For the sake of it. Don't do something. Get out of here. Stay around here. Well, Binghamton, how's chances of getting this McHale in for a little talk? Oh, McHale, I, I don't think there'll be possible. He's away on a mission. He's over at Calakai. Calakai, huh? Yeah. That's too bad. Sounded like he would have made a good story. Oh, uh, Brad, uh, Brad, uh, there, there are other stories, you know. I, uh, I've i seen uh, quite a bit of action myself. <laughs> yes, I know. I just saw one of your landings. You missed the beach by a mile. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, that's funny. Uh, let me tell you about this time I was on patrol. Was, uh, not now, <laughs> I was on patrol. You see, there was this Japanese submarine. But, Captain, this is went... urgent, sir. What is so urgent? You have to interrupt me right in the middle of a patrol. Sir, we just got a signal from complete, sir. It's Cali. It's under heavy Japanese attack. Six destroyers and 12 enemy barges. Sir. All right, Governor. All right, thank you. Now, you see, there was a Japanese submarine, and we were... Kalakai? Yes, sir. <laughs> Isn't that where you said Mikhail is? Well, what kind of a nitwit would send out one boat against odds like that? <laughs> And it, uh, that's what I'd like to know, Carpenter. But sir, I thought that you would have a mind with your thought. Don't just stand there. there. There's a war on. Go and do something. Yes, sir. Poor McHale. He and his crew must really have their hands full. <laughs> this is the life, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, remember, I'm married. <laughs> this is your war fighting for. <laughs> I raise you two pearls. <laughs> Hey, Chuck! Come on, boy, I want to get a little fishing before it gets too late. Where's that life raft? Yeah, okay, Skip, it's stuck in his cabinet. Well, hurry it up, will you? I got it. Whoa, oh, boy. Skip it! <laughs> Come on, will you? Check the fishing on the wait all day. Don't wait. All right, Eddie. <laughs> Listen, we better get this boat out of here before our little friend decides to come back. Tinker, check your engines. Willie, check your radio. Right, Skip. The rest of you guys, check the rest of the boat. Well, there's one thing for sure, Skip. The starboard running light's out. Yeah, look, uh, the radio master's out too, Skip. Uh, radio's out, Skip, and I mean far out, like busted. Oh, brother. Took a few hits in the engine, Skip. Well, we sure got off lucky. Tink, how long do you think it'll be before you get us running again? Oh, about 24 hours. Maybe about 48. You wouldn't like to try for 72, would you? Yeah, uh, well, that's about a kind of figure I had in mind. Captain. Yeah, why, why, why. We just got word from the fleet, sir. Yeah? They counterattacked and blasted the nips right off Kalakai. Ah. But no sign of Commander McHale, sir. 
Oh. No, this is terrible. It's terrible. It's all my fault, too. Those, those poor men are out there somewhere in the dark right now. They're probably hungry or hurt or even prisoner or even... Well, I, I just don't know how I'm going to sleep through the night, wondering, waiting. Don't stop, Binghamton. This is a great war story. A captain's lonely vigil, waiting for news from his men. Yes, yes. Waiting and wandering through the night, the long, sleepless nights. What's well, like a father's. Like a father waiting for the return of his child. And that's what they were like. You know, those men on the 73, they were... Well, they were like my children. You know, my burden would be a lot easier to bear if I were just out there with them, sharing their hardships and their... their suffering. Hey, second, hey, hey. What are you doing, Chuck? Well, oh, I just count here. 93, 94, 95, 96. Count for what? I'm just curious to see how many revolutions a minute she's doing. <laughs> well, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Come on, Tink, get up in there, too. Come on, baby. One of our search planes just reported in with this, sir. 73's life raft. Oh, no. Well, those look like knife holes. Oh, what a struggle those men must have put up. They also found a part of the radio master. Well, it's no wonder we didn't hear from them then. The poor devils didn't even have a chance to call for help. <laughs> oh, I tell you, gentlemen, a part of me has died out there in the Pacific. Tough break, Binghamton. You know, I don't believe I've ever seen a commanding officer so attached to his men before. Attached is not quite the word for it, Mr. Delvery. It was, uh, it was love. Yes, it was. <laughs> Especially Mikhail. He was, he was quite a guy. Quite a guy. And that's the way this story must be told. Through the eyes of the man who loved the most, Captain Wallace B. Bingham. <laughs> I think, uh, Mr. Devery, that a man like McHale requires a little more than just a story. Uh, Carpenter? Sir. Prepare a memorial service for tomorrow morning at 0900 on McHale's Island. We're going to pay our respects to the memory of the gallant men of PT-73. <laughs> You. Hey, we're getting close to home. You don't want old party pooper Binghamton to hear us, do you? Yeah, boy, if Binghamton finds out where we've been for the last three days, we're dead. <laughs> You're a seventh son of a seventh son. What's the matter? What do you say, Skip? What's the matter, Skip? The Japanese invaded our island? Worse than that. Binghamton's invaded. Hey, Chuck, bring around 45 degrees quick. We're going to go in the back way and find out what's going on there. And that is why I say that the memory of the now departed will linger long after the sound of shells and battle drums. <laughs> yes, gentlemen, we are gathered here today on this hallowed piece of land to pay tribute to a heroic crew. They were good men. They were good sailors. And they were good friends. The men of PT-73. <laughs> See what I heard? He's talking about us. He says we're his friends. He must have been drinking. It was a privilege to have known this man who was a legend before his time, my comrade in arms, my closest buddy, Quentin McHale. <laughs> his closest buddy? He must be stolen. And there are others to remember. What of Ensign Charles Parker? Yes, what of him? He was a bright, a hard-working lad. He was a credit to the Navy. He was a true product of the sea, to which he is now gone. Gee, I didn't know he felt that way about me. Why, uh, Chuck, I have a little respect for you. This is a funeral service. No kidding. Whose? <laughs> Ours and yours. <laughs> you know, for a minute, I thought you said, Mine? <laughs> 
You guys take care of Chuck. Fuji, get lost. I gotta go find out where we died from. Rupert. Bell. Come on, sleeping beauty. Come on. Hey. It is indeed a roll call of heroes. Ready? Aim. Fire! Uh, I'll get the rake. It's in the hot tub. As I was saying, my fellow mourners, this is not just a time of sadness. Hiya, copy. Hey, what's going on here? We're holding services for command. Miguel! <laughs> Oh, it is with a sense of profound emotion and a feeling of everlasting gratitude. Where's the rate? The rate? The rate? Stop tapping me. Give me the rate. And, uh, 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 that uh, concludes their services. Uh, uh, cease firing. Uh, an emergency just come up. Everybody back to the base. Condition red. Condition red. Dismiss! Dismiss! What is it, Binghamton? What's uh, happened? Oh, what? Uh, well, I, I can't, I can't tell you right now, Mister Devery. It is top secret. <laughs> now you get back to the base and you take cover. You take cover. Where is he? Adam McHale, get back from the grave. Where is he? Where? 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 McHale? Okay. Where is he? He's not in here. Carpenter, you've done it again. He's oh, no, sir. He was right over there. I saw right him. Right over where? Here I see him. And what I could? Ah! Ah! <laughs> McHale. Hey, McHale, what are you doing here? He's supposed to be dead. Oh. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Captain. <laughs> I'm not disappointed, naturally. I'm not disappointed. I'm thrilled. I'm very happy about the whole It's just about how did you escape from the Japanese of Calakai? The Japanese? Japanese. <laughs> just the Japanese. You know the Japanese, don't you? There's the little fellas with the almond-shaped eyes that we've been fighting. You know. <laughs> oh, uh, those Japanese? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's talking about the enemy, sir. Oh. <laughs> Tom Fleet reported us that there were six NIP destroyers there. There were 12 NIP landing barges there. Now, how did you escape from the Japanese of Calakai? Uh, how did we escape from it? Uh, well, 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 you see, sir, uh, when we were first attacked... Attacked? Yes, sir. They must have attacked right in the middle of a luau. Ah, <laughs> uh, 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 I'll let your cutthroats were never a calakai at all. You're at Manakura. Captain, how can you infer such a thing, sir? Oh, yeah, we were You're right, gentlemen. I'm terribly sorry, and I apologize. It's just that I've been under such a strain lately. Haven't uh, I been under a strain, Elroy? Oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. See there, Elroy says I've been under a strain. I wouldn't say anything like that. Would I say anything like never that? Never Certainly not. How about it, Ensign? How are things at Manakura? Oh, it was a real blast, sir. Why, some of the guys even started... <laughs> You were never at Calakai. You saw that. I will you were anywhere at Manakura. Uh, Captain, I can explain, sir. Explain. You are going to have plenty of time to explain, Mikhail. First of all, you're going to explain it to the court martial board, huh? Then you're going to explain it to the warden at Portsmouth Prison. Then, Mikhail, you're going to have about 20 years to write a book about it. Oh, to write a book, write a book. Boy, Skip, I'm sorry. I wish I were really dead now. When I get through with you, Mikhail, you're going to wish you were, too. All right, Carpenter, drop the court martial charge. Charges, make it direct disobedience of orders, yes. make it insubordination, make it dereliction of duty. Huh? What do you got to say about that? Well, sir, uh, with my best friend defending me, sir, I think I stand a pretty good chance of acquittal. What best friend are you talking about? What, what, what? Well, um, have you forgotten, Wally? <laughs> You said, uh, comrade in arms, my closest buddy. I only said those things when I thought you were deceased. Okay, Captain, okay. If you want to show Brad Devery and the press of the world how little our friendship really means. Mikhail, one of these days. Uh, Captain, then uh, we can consider these charges dropped, sir. On one condition, Mikhail. You want to get off of your spot, you're going to have to help me get off of mine. I don't care what you say, Skip. It just don't seem right being on the same side as Binghamton. Yeah, what a crummy deal. Letting him rescue us just so we can look like a hero with this newspaper guy. Yeah. Ah, uh, look, you guys. I don't exactly relish playing footsie with Binghamton either. But it was a stalemate. He had us over a barrel, and we had him over one. So let's just make the best of it, shall we? What now? What's with the engines? I don't know, Skip. Well, get back there and take a look, and fast. 
Oh, boy, if Binghamton doesn't find us on Panoy Island when he gets there to rescue us from the grave, he'll have a shot. Of course, we won't be lucky enough to watch our own funeral. Uh... I still don't understand, Binghamton. What makes you think McHale and his men are still alive? And here on Panoy, of all places. Oh, well, that, uh, that's intelligence. Intelligence. Uh, we got a report that some natives have seen some American sailors on this island. All right, you men, keep your eyes open now. Keep one open for McHale. Keep one open for Japanese. You think there may be nips on this island? Oh, you never can tell about those little devils. They're sneaky, you know. They're everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> nice work, Binghamton. You walked us right into a trap. Whose intelligence gave you your information? Ours or the Japanese? I don't understand this. McHale didn't say anything about the, 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 the natives didn't say anything about the Japanese being here. Prisoners, no talk. Now you look here. I'm a captain of the United States Navy, and I've got nothing to say. I'm just... <laughs> Uh, How long we got to walk to be rescued? Well, I don't know. Tinker's out looking for those guys. Hey, hey speak of the devil. What's up, Pink? Skipper, Japanese on the other side of the island. They got Binghamton, Codner, and the war correspondent. Oh, no. Oh, boy, a chance that this comes worse in a lifetime. What do you say, Skipper? We get back in the boat and head for home. <laughs> what, are you here with the Japanese? What else? It'll help end the war a lot faster. And besides, how much punishment can those poor Japanese take? <laughs> I must say it's a very tempting idea, Groover. <laughs> but, uh, nah, nah, it wouldn't be fair. Wouldn't yeah. be fair. Skipper's right, it wouldn't be fair. To the Japanese, I mean. <laughs> you know what the Geneva Convention says about extreme cruelty to the, to the enemy? <laughs> we gotta rescue him. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Tink, how many, how many Japanese were there? Oh, a five and an officer. We gonna rush him? No, nah, no, nah, we rush him to start shooting. Somebody's liable to get hurt. No, what we gotta do is to... Distract the Japanese away from Binghamton's crowd. Doggone it, how are we gonna do it? I got it. I got it, boys. Hey, Hap. Yeah? We got much of that stuff left aboard from Manakura? Yeah, most of it. All right. Tinker, come here, boy. Oh, no. No, 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 <laughs> nice going there, Tinker. <laughs> okay, mister, that's all the show for today. Okay, how far in the world have you been? Ah, hiya, Captain. I'm sorry it took so long, sir, but I had to round up a few Japanese. So you're McHale, back from the dead. I'm Devery, United Press. Oh, hi. I had a hunch that was a good story, and you and I was right. <laughs> oh, wait, you're forgetting whose idea this was. I organized this whole rescue party. There weren't supposed to be any Japanese here. Look out. Will you, Binghamton? You're blocking my shot. Now, Mikhail, let's have a nice big smile, huh? Well, I insist that I be in this picture. <laughs> Will you please, Binghamton? Hey, let's have one of you accepting his sword. Oh, here, take care. Uh, uh, <laughs> huh? Somebody up there hates me. <laughs> oh, but Captain, not Balaclava. That's just a hunk of coral. Yes, Balaclava. And this time I'm dispatching a patrol plane to make sure that you're there. Now, shove off. I don't want to see you for the next 48 hours. Well, now then. Shall we get on with the interview? Well, Captain, our newspaper down at the mission school would like to know. Bye-bye, Captain. Oh, and Georgie, don't forget, the name is McHale. McHale! McHale, out, 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 out. Bye-bye, Captain. I won first prize at Tiger Lily. 